Daily Graphic starts us off this morning. It says, Aircraft purchase graft allegation. Presidency chases suspects. Petition special prosecutor. Six service persons in Dansaman SHS reposted. EC's explanation do not warrant new register. Apron insists, and that's why they are doing Impene or Wapene demonstration this morning. Declare your innocence in Airbus bribery scandal. MPP throws challenge to former president John Dramani Mahama yesterday. Al Babi and Samoa addressing a press conference dared the former president to declare his innocence. Daily Guide. 5 million euros Airbus NDC bribe saga. U.S. court nails Kimping and brother. Nana orders probe into scandal. CD performs best against Doppler. <clears throat> it comes with a photo of uh, Vice President Dr. Baumia. And President turns heat on Mahama in Savannah. It says, your chibi brother bribes better than your uh, Dagomba brother. The Ghanaian Times. Kenya requests technical support to implement double track. Aggrieved customers of Gold Coast Fund Management threaten demo over locked up funds. And President orders probe into Airbus scandal, but the NDC fights back. Details on page 17. The Finder newspaper says probe 5 million euro Airbus bribe scandal. President Kufado orders special prosecutor. A Bank of Ghana named Central Bank of the Year. Zoom Lion appeals High Court ruling in Auditor General case. And the MPP minority raised questions about the Airbus deal in 2011. We'll share a bit of that uh, debate in Parliament with you featuring the Honorable Sam Chin who was minority leader at the time, uh, Dr. Benjamin Kumwa, who was the Minister for Defense at the time and others in that conversation. But I'd like to draw in my panelists into the education conversation briefly and place on record well, because we've got a message from the uh, education ministry suggesting that the education ministry uh, or the G has never promised to hold extra classes for their children and uh, uh, interesting. But my guest this morning, the Honorable Member for uh, Member of Parliament for the Second D constituency, the Honorable Andrew Ejapamesa, is also a lawyer. And Comrade Mutala Mohammed is a former Deputy Trade Minister, former Member of Parliament, and uh, he is contesting the Tamale Central seat, hopefully, to win it. Gentlemen, welcome. Good morning. How, How are we doing? doing? He seems to be following me everywhere. He seems to be following you. Yeah. <laughs> are you following him? Unfortunately, both of us are not responsible for scheduling right. for TV appearances. So I guess that uh, he ought to begin asking whoever does the scheduling. Why? Oh, okay. Why? So, so, so they, they please me. So they talk they to each other. Yes, they should change. Then, then this is scheduling, then MPB is scheduling. I, I know, know maybe it's sheer coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, but it's always good to have you. Great to have you on the show. My uh, patriot friend. My uh, <laughs> comrade friend. <laughs> Okay, so let's co co let's uh, go back to the education conversation quickly, and then we'll get into Airbus, and hopefully we'll talk about uh, the uh, debate in Parliament. But first, let's talk about education. Let's listen to the uh, PRO from 2018, and then we'll listen to Cassandra, the two statements that were made, and then we'll make our own analysis on it. Unless you have to go to a cafe, pay extra for it. Why is that the case, and, and what are you doing about it? Yes. Um, in fact, first of all, we have to apologize to the general public for the inability of the system to generate the calls as we anticipated. You know, previously, they have to go to the private cap, uh, cafe operators to get the calls. But this time around, we wanted to save them from this trouble of the market demands where often they inflate the cost of these uh, cars. So we said, by being behind your phone, just dial star 713 star two, four, hash, and it will deduct five cities. You're able to get your code and go onto our website to have your status checked. But it couldn't work out. We had plan B. The plan B was to revert to the previous system. So last night, we have asked the post offices, the rural banks, to have these cars sold to all interested persons, whether individually or in bulk, so they can have the code. Once they have the code, the system runs in, I mean, the CSSPS dot gov dot g it website that's where you can check your status beyond the apology to the parents then what next yeah we actually anticipate that not all the candidates the 490,000 candidates who are qualified to be placed who are able to find spaces in all their five choices we knew that that's why we introduced the self-placement we the computer doesn't want to place anybody in any school that he has not selected otherwise we could have done, just done that placement because we are talking about competitive meritorious uh, a placement system where you select a school 
would say aggregate nine, but their superior passing candidates over there, they will displace you. You have to go to your next option school. That one too, you go and meet people there too who might have selected that place as what well, their first choices and they might have a superior person. That one to be displayed. So it will run through till you don't find any school in any of your five choices. Those with the gold track who are going to stay at home till 8th of November, did you engage parents at any point in time on how to handle these kids while they are at home? The ministry, GS, they have met various stakeholders the clergy, uh, heads of schools, uh, uh, parents at all levels. You have a situation where the current capacity for the senior high school, it means that about 181,000 will not go to school. Who child wants to stay home for this child to go next three years? No. We are asking about the children who will be in the house waiting for their turn. Uh, we are engaging t teachers, in national service people, in every district. They are placing about four four teachers in every district or circuit where class, uh, classes will be organized for them in every space While that they, they find themselves. Why are they at home? They assume that they are having their vacation. Where would we do these classes be taking place? Are parents aware of the center? Oh, oh yes. You know, we have a lot of church halls or community going centers. going to do the classes in church halls? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a temporary kind of a structure. I and mean, already people are organizing classes in some of these uh, structures already. And even we can even take advantage of some private schools when they close, uh, we can go in there and also have the classes. Of this is supposed to take place just next week, and so from what you're you're saying, I don't I don't hear any certainty in, in it. You you you're saying it's something we are still in the process of doing. But this the students' first batch is going next week. So when is this classes and the motivation for teachers and the structures and church halls going to 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 start? I hope you know about NAPCO. They have completed the recruitment of NAPCO people. After staying at home for close to three months, the service says it is putting in measures for Gold Track students to recover lost time. Give the students extra tuition to help them improve better on their academics. And during the intervention, we are also able to identify weaknesses of students and to nip the problem in the bud. She, however, warned against any school organizing extra classes. She indicated parents can enroll their wards for private vacation classes. Or if you're a parent, you also have a responsibility of ensuring that whilst home, your ward studies hard. But for us, once the person is home, we know that it's vacation. That we're going to teach them in mosques and churches. We have never said so. Cassandra Chum Ampo for further touched on an intervention fee of 50 cities to be borne by government. I mean, depending on the environment of the school, some decide to do their intervention before the normal class starts. Others decide to do it after school. We have not been rigid on when exactly they are to do the intervention, but it's going on in the schools. Government is paying 50 cities for each child as a motivation. I mean, government has even absorbed the PTA motivation, which is 20 cities. So 20 cities plus the 50 cities, 70 cities as motivation fee on each of the students for the teachers. These are two PROs of the Ghana Education Service saying two different things on the same subject. One promises that we're going to organize extra classes in churches and mosques and what have you. And now the other says, we never said a thing like that. Uh, the PR of the Ministry of Education is has been on my phone. Uh, Vincent, good morning to you. He says that, well, they called them out. But as far as we know, we do not know if anybody was called out. We don't have that detail. We don't have that tape. The only thing we know is that that was the recording in 2018, and this is the recording in 2020. In the meantime, the children are hanging in the balance. Bobo, I'll start with you on this one. Uh, what do you say? Two things about the same subject from the same institution, I find it quite suspicious. Well, good morning. Uh, good morning to our church viewers, particularly my constituent in second day. Um, you see, it's important when we are analyzing content mm. of statements that have been made, you know, to, uh, as it were, to enable us to make a better appreciation of the matter. If these two statements were coming from the same individual, mm. then I'll be in a position to make a determination whether indeed she's been inconsistent or that, you know, she's shifted her position. Mm. 
but the introduction clearly indicates that the first gentleman that you spoke to was the PRO of GES in Greater Accra region. Right, for the region, right. And then the lady that you spoke to yesterday mm. is the PRO of Ghana Education Service at the national level. Absolutely. So the question is, and of course you've indicated here, except that you say you don't have any evidence mm. to that fact, that the PRO of the Ministry of Education mm. has indicated that when those comments were made by the Great Accra Regional mm. PRO, mm. as opposed mm. to what the National PRO mm. uh, said, they called him out. Mm. Uh, I do not have any basis to doubt that statement. But if these you know, uh, responses were not coming, I would have thought that the policy incoherence uh, doesn't help the discourse. Mm. You know, it's important, as far as I'm concerned, this free SHS program is one of the best things that has ever happened to our country. Does it, does it not worry you that two communication officials from the same institution communicating about the same subject matter uh, two years apart are making different statements? One says, we promise that we will organize classes in churches and mocks where we are in talk with the churches. And two years down the line, the boss to that uh, subordinate says, we never promised a thing like that. Who sent the subordinate to make that statement? Johnny, I just indicated right here that if these, these two statements were coming from one individual, mm. of course, you can make a definitive it's assessment. from the institution. Hold on. But then the, another rebuttal has been provided to you that you yourself mentioned now, mm. that the first gentleman, gentleman clearly did not have authorization, and then he was called out. Uh, because, look. He didn't? I am not aware. You okay. yourself indicated now. Mm. And I've gone further to say to that me, yeah. if this rebuttal hadn't come, mm. of course, I would tell the position that you are taking. Okay. That two conflicting or seemingly conflicting statements coming from one institution mm. does not help the conversation. I just said so. Right. So I'm not holding brief for anybody except that you have yourself provided to us mm. that the first accession was indeed rebutted according to the uh, official of the Ministry of I, Education. I, I'm, I'm asking and Echo, so it puts I'm, into I'm question Echo, as to whether I'm asking yeah. Echo to put an official position on it. Yes, it will help. Mm, yeah, and so back to the point that I was making. Yeah, of course there are issues, and I support the double track a hundred percent. I do not even support the attempt to eradicate it. Why not? Yeah, because it makes sense to me that we sweat our infrastructure year round. Mm. When we were in secondary school, I don't know whether you did the old system. Mm. I no. did the old system. No, I did SSG. GCEO level. We go to school first time, we come back home for vacation for Christmas. We stay till January and go back until March, April. We go back and stay till May, June. And then we vacate. Classrooms are empty all the way into September before we go back to school. Mm. We attended vacation classes. Right. So what is unique about the free SHS system now that allows students to go on vacation classes when they are on break? What is unique about it? How is that different from the system that was practiced in the past? How is it different? Indeed, I'm sure that those who did the SHS when free had not been introduced, themselves had long vacations that they used to attend vacation classes, no? So how is that different from what is happening now? But, of course, people like to create, you know, issues where they really are. And I'm not saying that there are no challenges in the implementation of the free SHS because mm -hmm. government has consistently mm -hmm. admitted that, look, there are issues mm -hmm. and we need to deal with them because what is the alternative? The alternative would have been to keep 180 or 100,000 mm. children home on an annual basis. The, the PR do you know the impact? Yes. Do you know the impact, impact of that in 10 years? That's 1.8 million people that are half baked. So for me, the fact that government has been bold to say, look, yes, I'm not going to wait and build all the classrooms mm. before Ghanaian children are allowed to school. In any event, whilst we wait to build those classrooms, mm -hmm. we'll be wasting in excess of 100,000 Ghanaian children per year. I will use the existing infrastructure 
split the academic calendar in such a manner that everybody gets to go to school. Mm. How do I resolve the quality? I will increase contact hours whilst the children are in school now, mm. over and above what used to be the case in the past. Okay. So that we can get everybody at least educated up to the 10, 18. So, Fantastic so, so, policy. So, so the parents are raising questions that, look, these children stay home for two, three months and there seem to be no plan for them. And they are asking for government to intervene at least and, and do something about it. Holiday jobs, extra classes, because then it turns out, as the teachers have told us, that the curriculum, they are not able to finish the syllabus. And that becomes a problem when they are going to sit for their exam. Does that, Johnny, does that, does that worry you? You see, well? I think people are overstretching it. Why do you That's think so? That's my honest view. Why do you think so? Look, when you were in, and I don't want to compare because mm. it, it doesn't help. The whole essence of the private classes that we used to attend mm. when we were doing O and A level and SHS, mm. the vacation classes that we used to attend when we were doing SHS mm. that S government SSE. was not paying for was to bridge the gap that the regular curriculum mm. could not meet. Fact. That's the truth. I was in Addis Adel. I did accounting. Principles of accounting. Frank Wood. Mm. Did we finish? Frank Wood, no. We didn't. But we had to go for private class. We had to go for extra class. We had to go to for vacation classes to make up. Now government has come in. The only difference with what prevailed in the past mm. and what is existing today is that as opposed to parents paying in the past, government is paying today. And the academic calendar mm. has been adjusted to ensure that everybody gets an opportunity to go to school. The parents say their so children are staying at home longer than they stay in school. If you put 12 months together, they are staying at home longer than nearly about six, seven months staying at home than they go to school. And I, they don't, are I, don't think, I don't think that that's... Well, to be honest, I haven't done the studied okay. the double track calendar mm -hmm. to confirm or as it were, mm. dispute okay. the assertion that is ma being made by parents. Okay. But I saw the initial uh, uh, program mm -hmm. when Dr. Duchum and uh, the, the Deputy Minister and the Minister of Education himself mm -hmm. introduced this policy. We were made to understand, unless of course we are being told that that has changed, that the program has been designed such that mm. if you look at the contact hours that the children would be exposed mm -hmm to teachers, it is even more mm -hmm. than what existed in the past. Okay, wrap up for me. So that in an academic year, mm -hmm. if in the past you spent 50 hours, this new program mm -hmm. will ensure that in an, academic hour, in an academic year, you spend 54. That's an improvement. What, what do you say to those who are calling on the schools to organize extra classes? Now the PR of the Ministry of the Education Services, no extra classes. Parents must take that responsibility on Parents their own. have always had the responsibility the parents of are saying, extra look, classes. Because you have been the In ones addition to school fees. Okay. So the, the the parents are saying because you are the ones who are who have been teaching our children, we want to leave them with you to continue from where you would live off officially during the term. So that they won't have to go to a new teacher to perhaps Johnny, start all that's over why again. I what do you that, say to that? I think that people are overstretching it. Mm. I lived in second D. I attended school in Adesado. Mm. When we vacate, we go back home. We don't stay in Cape Coast with family or continue in boarding house to attend vacation classes with our school teachers. Mm -hmm. We attend vacation classes at GSTS, okay. St. John's, Fijai. Mm -hmm. Indeed, the choice of where you go for vacation classes at all times, depending on where uh, 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 you could find some attraction. Mm -hmm. you, you understand? <laughs> no, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand. You know this for a fact. I don't we, understand. We shopped around I don't to find out I where. But you see, I don't oh no, of course, I mean, at the time I was a uh, 16 year old uh, adventurous young man. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, 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 no, no, but on, 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 a, on a more serious note, yeah. I think that this intervention mm. that the government of Ghana, mm. uh, under the able leadership of His Excellency Donald Dankwa Akufuado, implemented. It's something that we should all support. Okay. And I urge parents who have had to make some adjustment. Mm. Of course, nobody is denying that the academic calendar has changed. Indeed, I saw some letter yesterday mm -hmm. 
that had been written by the Education Ministry of Kenya, mm. seeking to solicit help from Ghana in assisting them in implementing double track. Because the truth of the matter is, they have experience of children not being fully educated in their country as well. Okay, thank you. I'm reading something from um, gbcghanaonline.com. It's a report from Friday the 19th of July 2019. It was posted at 2.55 p.m. It comes with a beautiful photo of the PR of the Education Service, Cassandra Chum Ampofo. It says the public relations officer of the GES, Cassandra Chum Ampofo, says the extra classes which will be organized for senior high schools is one of government's intervention. Madam Chum Ampofo noted that the extra classes for which government is paying 50 Ghana cities per student will start on the 19th of August. End of the story. Bobo. This is evidence on the face of the pink sheet. It's on GBC. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And of course, my position is consistent. Now you've confirmed that on two occasions, mm. one individual has made contradictory statements. Mm. And I think that doesn't help the conversation. Thank you. There ought to be clear policy coherence mm. so that parents can work with the kind of communication that is coming out. Okay. Absolutely. Echo. Uh, we're waiting for the statement, if you have any. But I'll take a bite on this one. Uh, Bobo says... A bite. There's he actually munched. It, no, so no, no. I shouldn't take a, a bite. Let me also munch. No, you... you <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Bobo says, look, you are overstretching this if you're asking for, you're asking for too much. Because extra classes have always been taken care of by parents. This is we, we, we have We have now modernized the school system such that we are sweating out our classrooms and making good use of them, trying to enroll more numbers and give an opportunity to all. Why do you seem to have a problem with it? First and foremost, let me say good morning to you and my Patriot friend. Good I'm, morning. I'm wondering why he's here. I thought he would have been in the constituency. But you um, should be in the constituency too. Well, I went through my parliamentary primary essential and I went to okay. his year to go. And this is the heat of the campaign, except mm. that perhaps, like most of the MPP MPs, including mm. the leadership in parliament have done, mm. mafia out competitors. Mm. And it is obvious, some of them are even saying that if you have anyone contest me, the, there will be problems in the NPP, except maybe perhaps my brother has done that through his constituency chairman or secretary. Let I them worry I, about I, their party I understand issues. No, I'm worried about I understand that uh, uh, one in gentleman who is interested in contesting <laughs> Your, your seat. Situation. Okay. It's not my seat. The seat is not for me. Okay, but you are sitting yeah, on it. Of now. course, yes, yeah, but it's not mine. So for now, it's your seat. <laughs> it's the people of Ghana, or in, in this case, secondly, okay. who determine who sits on it. What, what is the gentleman saying? I understand that he's going to pick his nomination forms today. today. Nobody has stopped him. I'm saying that okay. I just hope that you haven't done what your leadership have actually done in Parliament. You have Chairman Sabunsu and. Honorable Joe Wise, mm. all indicating that they don't want to be contested. And I no, no, he them. didn't say. I, I interviewed the uh, <laughs> uh, Honorable Chair Mr. Bonsu what for hot issues, and what? he said that he has never said it. He, had, he doesn't fear contest, and he wants as many people as no, want to contest. No, but he's supporting the them. idea that certain consensus candidates should go and oppose. Absolutely. And he says that Absolutely. parliament is like wine. What, what, the more you stay in there, the what, better you become. What is he telling us? That if that is the case, then he shouldn't have come to parliament in the first place. He should have allowed okay. other people to be there. Let's I talk about education. So, so why, are you, why are you worried about double first track? And foremost, and first and foremost, <laughs> it's not about me or we as NDC. It's about progressive forces in this country. Mm. But let me just say good morning to the people of Tamale Central mm. Mm. and of course your viewing public and urge those who are home that the demonstration has actually started. Mm. I would leave here inshallah go and take my red or black t-shirt and join mm. the progressive forces of this country mm. who are demonstrating against the needs of the first lady in the person of Jim Mensah and the Tescom you know mm. member former member when myself and Dr. Bosman were all in the University of Ghana mm -hmm. as students and subsequently became a patron for Tescon, who happened to be the deputy EC chair. Mm -hmm. They are machinations with this government to rig the 2020 election. We can assure them it won't happen. So I just urge people to join You are, you are wasting all your time talking about peripheries. When is your time? I'll cut you. What, I've asked how, you about how, educational how you define, issues how do you three define, times. How do you define periphery? How do you define that? And in but that is not what is on the table. And in it, why? Didn't he talk about his constituency? Was it on the table? Did you tell him that he was discussing? You have, you have, you have used four minutes. You. you are not being fair. He just talked about someone picking a form 
Is it? But because you introduced, you introduced the you subject. Introduced it. It, was, it, it was my turn to speak. You so introduced the subject. Hold on. But subject. I'm saying you are, you're, you're used four minutes of your I time. I haven't used four minutes. You have. How many minutes are left? You have. Look, in the first place, he peddled absolute falsehood mm. on the figures. Mm. And I think that it ought to be corrected. He said that if the free SHS was not implemented, stu students or young people in excess of 100,000 mm. would have been home. As if without free SHS, there wouldn't have been students in school. I mean, I think that sometimes let's credit the viewing public with some, some, some intelligence. If we say that the free SHS has admitted 100,000 a year or 100,000 plus a year, and you say that but for the free SHS, those 100,000 would have been home. It it's means that, excess. please, those excess 100,000 would have been home. <laughs> you are even making your case worse. Those hundred, excess 100,000 people would have been home. Mm. What it means is that but for free SHS, <clears throat> there, there wouldn't have been students in any senior science school. Not How can? That is what it means. That is what it means. Is there any way, in any wildest of anybody's imagination, that we can give an explanation to what he said than this? If you are saying that we have over 100,000 students in, in free SHS, and you say that, but for free SHS, the excess of 100,000 people would have been at home. What it means is that without the free SHS, there wouldn't have been, the, those 100,000 people would have been home. But it's true that you are enrolling more I'm now. saying that, but let's credit the viewing public. You don't peddle such falsehood. You okay. just throw figures and expect everybody to understand. In any mm -hmm. case, the extra classes, mm -hmm. I am happy that the PRO has been exposed. Now he is saying that these two, when we pointed out to him the two contradictory statements mm -hmm. coming from the same institution, look at the lame excuse that he is desperately trying to defend, that they called them out. The announcement was made publicly on a national television. Did they come out to tell the Ghanaian people mm -hmm. that no, the statement that is made by our regional PR it's not the position of the Ghana Education Service and the Ministry of Education. They never did that. Mm -hmm. So if I was watching the program and a parent mm -hmm. who has kids in the, in the senior secondary school and I had an education officer, a regional PRO of the Ghana Education Service, mm -hmm. says on national television that we are going to organize extra classes for people. Mm -hmm. And you tell me that you call them out. You call them in some hole or in some office where someone says you shouldn't have made that statement. What you ought to have done, if indeed they called them out, they would have made a statement, grand same interview, mm. telling the people of this country that no, we haven't had or we don't have any plan to organize extra class for people. So that statement is a lie. They never called anybody out. They but knew you, what they you were can't doing. can't be too sure about that. If it is not a lie, did they tell us that the statement made by the original PRO was not true? But you don't work with them, do you? I, did, uh, why? The statement was not made in some hole somewhere. They made the statement on a national television that they are going to organize extra classes. Now, if the G GES knew, the PRO who, has this, who is denying mm -hmm. rather faintly this palpable statement that was made and the position that was taken by this government, mm -hmm. if they knew that that statement the gentleman made was not right, mm -hmm. they could easily have called TV3. Didn't they call TV3? Didn't they call or send you messages denying that they never made those statements, mm. that it wasn't their position? At the time the statement they, they made, knowing very well that the people of this country were watching, parents were watching, you have the record, and I believe if you never had this record, she would have been denying that they never made that statement. She would have even denied that the original PRO never made that statement. So that is what I'm saying. It's a lie. They never indeed called anybody out. If they did, they would have made that statement. But you see, the other issue, in my constituency in Tamale Central, mm. I have mm. had the course to organize extra classes mm. for people. Not a single, in fact, few schools are able to finish their syllabuses mm. at the end of the green or the yellow, you know, reckless implementation of rather very good educational policy. Now, when you organize the classes, mm. when they go to school, at the end of the term, they tell the students that we are not able to finish. So when you go home, attend extra classes. Right. There are some families who are finding it difficult to even buy uniforms for their kids. How are they going to pay for the extra classes? You want free SHS to solve I'm that? I'm saying that how are they going to... No, look, if free, SHS, if free SHS cannot solve that, free SHS should not create that. Free SHS should not. He's talking about the fact that Did when... free SHS creates that? I am saying that the propensity, mm. the level at which... Let two tests. And I speak as a teacher. Mm. And I've just given you a palpable example where I had to organize three extra classes mm. for students in the senior high schools in Tamale Central because almost all of them indicated that in their various schools they couldn't finish their syllabuses. Mm. Now he's saying that they attended extra classes because they couldn't finish some of their syllabuses when they were in the O levels and A levels. Was that your case too? I No. 
You didn't have that happening all the time. You never attended extra I'm classes. I'm saying that you didn't have that happening all the time, mm -hmm. that you go to school and you are not able to finish all the syllabuses. Mm -hmm. At least there were some subjects. There were some subjects that you would not be able to finish. You had extra classes. Mm -hmm. And mind you... But during vacation, we always extra, extra classes. Well, I'm saying that extra classes are not necessarily organized. Okay. To be able to cover up what you couldn't cover up when you were in school. Mm -hmm. Extra classes could also be organized or be attended so that you can have extra tuition right. from what you had in school to create the impression that anybody who is attending extra classes, you attend the extra classes because you want to be able to cover the things you couldn't cover when you were in school. That is absolutely false. I attended extra classes to treat, for example, economics. Mm. Uh, 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 what's the name? Demand and supply, for right. example. Mm. You can have you can have cost theory. Let me just use cost theory, right. economics. Which, which which involved a lot of money. When we're doing doing economics at the SSS, we treated cost theory in school. But when I attended extra classes, cost theory was actually taught, and my appreciation of it perhaps was better when I attended the extra classes mm. <coughs> because at the time when I was being taught the cost theory, mm. mind you, in class, you are about 40, 50 students. Okay. So the extra classes is just to give you extra tuition. Mm. But for him to create the impression that because they attended extra classes when they were doing O-levels, they necessarily attended the extra classes to be able to cover up what they couldn't do. I say it's false. Okay. Now, you have a parent. Uh, let uh, me give uh, you this example. Hold on. Let me, let 30 seconds. We'll come back you have a parent mm. who said on radio mm. that he had three kids. Those three kids, extra classes, he pays 500. I'm told it's even 800 Ghana mm. cities. But I'm just reporting what the parents have. 500 Ghana cities. That the three kids, he paid 1,500 Ghana cities. When free SHS was not there, he wasn't paying that much. Now, what is the use of it? Well, what, what, changed, what changed in the price ranges? Exactly. When you made a point here, when you, this is free extra, extra classes that private individuals are organizing okay. for students because mm. they couldn't finish their Let, Let's go on to the telephone lines. Echo Vincent as far as a PR of the Ministry of Education is joining me on the phone line. Echo, good morning. Johnny, good morning. How are you? Very well. Two conflicting uh, answers on the same subject matter, extra classes to organize or not to organize. <coughs> what is the official position? Cassandra said they never said that we're going to have extra classes. The evidence has proved that it was actually said before. What do you say? Johnny, um, let me state first and foremost that the <coughs> Ministry of Education or the Ghana Education Service mm. has never, ever officially put any statement out to indicate that we are going to organize extra classes in church. You so, and I know so, that so, Echo, Echo, hold on. Let's, Echo, let's clear that. I'll come to it. Let's clear that know, first. Echo, hold on. Hold on for me. Echo, hold on for me. Let's clear I, I this. The first line. Let's, clear, let's clear this <laughs> first head off first, please. So, the original PRO made a categorical statement to us. He, he was interviewed by Alfred Okansi. Yesterday, Cassandra was here, and I've also read for you a July 2019 publication on Ghana Broadcasting Corporation's website that says all point to the fact that the Education Sandra. Ministry, or if you like, uh, the GES, promised that the extra classes were going to ha happen and that it was an intervention. How did you come and say that you never, ever promised? I am saying that as communicators or as public relations officers, sometimes you falter. Mm. When you falter, mm. we either strategically call you out at the backroom discussions. Mm. There have been several instances that myself, yeah, and in fact all the communicators that you interview on your platforms, mm. sometimes make mistakes. For you not to accept mm. the confidence of the particular communicator, mm. there is a strategic mm. means or ways of doing that. So you may not necessarily have to call the person out publicly mm. for the person to know that, hey, whatever you said was not in consonance with the vision and the policy statement of the Ministry of Education as far as the double track implementation is concerned. So let me state that the Ghana Education Service, neither the Ministry of Education, officially has communicated to any regional directorate 
or any district directorate of education to organize listen, listen. extra classes in, in churches. churches. However, listen to at him. the initial stages of the implementation of the double class everyone. system, there were stakeholder engagement, and some people in the education service suggested that if students are going to stay home for one and a half months, mm. and sometimes maximum two months, and let me even correct this, there's no instance as far as the academic calendar of the double track 2019-2020 SHS academic calendar is concerned. Where student stays home for three months, it is inaccurate, it is not correct, mm. it cannot be true that any student stays home for three months. And even okay. along the year, for the whole year, mm. it is a principle of the double track system that Every student is supposed to be in school for eight months for the whole year. Okay. So what it means is that whether you go to school for one month and come home and stay for, let's say, one and a half months or two months, the most important thing is that by the end of the one year, mm. the calendar has been arranged in the sense that you would have your eight months okay. contact hours with your teacher. I call. I call. So it is not true. I call. Everybody stays home for six months. I call. Let me let me step in here at this point. So you say as communicators you fault up. Was there no briefing for these <coughs> communicators speaking on behalf of government? And by that extension, do I take it that if what you are saying three days on comes out as not being the position of the ministry, you would say you faulted? Um, <coughs> I'm saying that the official position is that government never said anywhere, or the Ministry of Education never said. In fact, my deputy minister has made this claim. How come there was no statement? Everywhere. How come there was no official no statement to that effect? To have extra classes. However, if there is a conflict of statement between technocrats at the Ghana Education Service, I am saying that it is a mere falter as to how we caution them may not be so problematic how, because how come we do not also want to affect the confidence of anybody who works with the Ministry of Education call, because we believe that... I call, allow me to ask my question. How come... excellence of public relations as far as all these years are concerned. So once they were, you may fault them. Echo, how come there was no official statement on such a very crucial matter if the ministry or GS recognized that somebody made a slip? How come there was no official statement on this? At TV3, do you always call out people or we, do you always try to bring out the shame of we, we, the falters of people who make mistakes? We, we don't take taxes. We don't take the taxes of the people. You do, so you are accountable to the people. Strategies to which you deal with some of these matters. But we don't take the taxes of the people. You do, so you should be accountable to the people. People who are committed to their cause, and the Ghana Education Service and the Ministry of Education decided to engage them. That door. But the official statement is that. We have not promised anybody, and there's no official document to prove. Okay, Echo, I thank you. I thank you very much for your time. Grateful. Grateful, very grateful. That's uh, Echo Vincent Dasifo. He is the PR of the Ministry of Education. He says that uh, the, the people were called out if there was conflicting com communication. It was because the technocrats at the ministry had some issues that they couldn't trash out. And uh, it is not practice, really, that people will be called out out there. Uh, so many things. You heard it yourself. Mm -hmm. Even with what you read, mm -hmm. the PRO of the Ghana Education Service, who, in fact, on, on GBC mm. the online, online yeah. stating that the, the extra classes will start on the 19th of August. Right. 19th of August. Mm. He's still denying. But you see, it's, he's telling us, wrap, wrap up calling for me. someone mm. out because that person made a st statement representing the Ghana Education mm. Service mm. and the Ministry of Education and by extension, government of Ghana. And they felt that that statement was not correct. Mm. They just called the person and told him, oh, don't do that again. When the information was publicly made, so what it means is that any parent listening to the gentleman and watching him on TV3 mm. saying that government was going to organize free extra classes and also listening and reading what the PR has never been said. I'm saying that uh, even with the video, you see these people, okay. I don't know what...
So we, we will we'll, we'll read, we'll read a few messages evidence. and then I'm sure we can discuss Airbus. In 2011, there was a debate in Parliament where the minority at the time, uh, the MPP, and uh, now the majority, raised questions about cost and many other issues. We'll share the detail with you. Elton, and welcome back. Thank you, uh, Jenny So a few messages this morning. My children were given a list of books to buy with specific authors by the school authorities, and that is a directive from GS. I'm a concerned parent, and most parents can share same if uh, contact them. Good morning. It has no name. This one, good morning. Ghana, I think the government rushed a lot of uh, their policy implementations in education, and it will surely come back to haunt us. That's why almost all of the government officials have their awards in private schools. We trust the way TV3 takes up issues, and we hope that it will always be there to check all governments. Hafiz uh, from Tamale, thank you for that. Good morning, TV3. All government policies are not favorable to private schools. Very soon, if care is not taken, all private schools will collapse. Uh, why should governments absorb the BEC registration fees of pupils in public schools but ask those in private schools to pay their own fees? Even the training workshop for new curriculum private schools were left out. The executives have to talk uh, over and over before they, are, they were allowed to do it in a very exorbitant fees. King Dubois uh, the second, Agona uh, this one is, uh, good morning, Johnny. Personally, I think it is high time we start uh, depoliticizing our education, health, and other key sectors of our economy. The free senior high school system is a very good policy, but the consequences it comes with are numerous. Ghana Education Service must not allow themselves to be manipulated by any political party, or else we, as Ghanaians, will never have a stable educational system. By Peter Clever from Nandom in the Upper West Region. Good morning, TV3. This government does uh, doesn't have the school children at heart. The government is bent on scoring political points. The old curriculum had textbooks which made teaching easy and effective. If Echo Vincent says uh, it's not their duty to provide textbooks, then he doesn't know what he's talking about. Because, Johnny, we are suffering in the schools. The teacher's pack uh, contains only samples and reasons for the new curriculum. Uh, rich speed inside Zebila. Walanyo in Akwetia says, Airbus is getting interesting uh, revelation, thinking NDC will be fast to turn the truth around to be like just speculation, but it can't. They can counter uh, the judgment of the UK courts by suing the prosecutor and the company if only they have genuine explanation for disgracing Mills Mohammed's while administration and the country as a whole. Mohammed really needs to redeem his image before the worst happens to him. Uh, posterity has a nice way to work you out. Regards, NS Yaokumi. This one is from Apostle Paul from the OT region. The same GES has warned churches not to use their classrooms as churches. Now they want to use these outfits for extra classes. What a country we are. Hashtag uh, three new day. Uh, good morning, uh, said Johnny. We were all in this country, uh, in this nation, when the, uh, they promised extra classes for our brothers and sisters who are now in this traffic uh, light system of education. But today, they are boldly denying this. My question now is who gave that promise and why were they not able to uh, uh, disprove this for all this was Samuel Delali from Dozi. Let me take my last comments. Uh, lots of comments coming in. Good morning, Hughes. Our educational system in limbo. Uh, the government rushed the implementation of the free SHS just for political expediency. If the challenge was infrastructure, couldn't the e-blocks initiated under the previous government have been completed before commencing the free SHS? In their quest to win power, politicians will take very strange decisions which doesn't make sense even to the layman and this kind of government in particular is doing too many things wrong Kwame Wa, let me take a few more in all our days at school we never had free extra vacation classes so don't let us overburden government with vacation classes let's stop disturbing this MPP government they are doing very very well free SHS is meant for the deprived and if we expect them to pay extra fees again for the classes then what is the purpose of free SHS. Ghana is really bleeding. Era Madenta new site. Good morning, TV3. Please tell a Japa that I never attended a vacation class 
or any extra classes and I know a lot of my likes and yet we passed all subjects in excellence and are doing well in the field of work. They should not make it look like the long time the students are spending in the house and needs extra classes is normal. Latif from Castle, I think that's where we end with it. Messages yeah. this morning, Jenny Hughes. Thank you very much, Etienne. I'm say uh, we're wrapping up. Coco, please play the the throwback from Parliament uh, sometime in 2011 uh, on the Airbus saga. Let's let's play let's play that uh, briefly. It's, it was uh, in yesterday's news, and we will toss that in quickly. But Bobo, let me let me start this conversation with you. The uh, <laughs> the president has written to the. Office of the Special Prosecutor directed that he should collaborate with his UK counterparts to ensure that some uh, some the identities are found and then all of that. But let's let's go to Parliament. It's Roback, uh, 2011. Take a look at it. I went to the internet to check prices of various aircrafts. I have a copy here. I will table it before you. My concern is value for money. One would have thought that social democrats will be more interested in value for money so that we will save the taxpayer the little money that we have in this country. Mr. Speaker, the standard price of every plane is quoted. The Embraer 190 that we are being told today in this house that the Speaker is costing the taxpayer a whooping sum of 88 million. The speaker, when you go to the internet, the speaker, it's 32 million dollars. We have civil pattern and military pattern. And this and and, and yes. And and we sat down, my team sat down with the manufacturers, and this is what <laughs> we came up with. There are different issues. That's General Smith there. He says there are different issues. Or so also Dr. Kumbo was in that conversation. There was the MP for Mpunya, Echuma uh, Mpunya Obeja, the who's now sports minister, and, and many others. Uh, Sir Jim Sabozo is minority leader. Uh, Bobo, the president has um, ordered, or if you like, instructed the office of the special prosecutor to deal with the matters and, and fi bring finality to it, finding government official one and, and all those guys. Now, yesterday, the <coughs> party organized a press statement, a press conference, and it pointed to the fact that President John Mahama, former President John Mahama, is this government official one. Are you not jumping the gun? Number one, you say investigate. Number two, you are now saying we know who he is. Are we not jumping the gun? Well, I guess that the official circles uh, would confirm uh, definitively mm. uh, by way of the special prosecutor invoking the bilateral arrangements that we have mm -hmm. with the UK and the US and of course I'm sure France as well mm -hmm. because bear in mind that this investigation was a joint investigation that was conducted by three governments mm -hmm. in fact four agencies in three countries mm -hmm. The Department of State, Department of Justice in the USA, mm -hmm. the SFO in UK, and then the French entity whose name I am not very. Something financier. I'm not. I'm not. I, I'm very limited in French. <laughs> we can't blame you. Yeah, mm. and, and and so and so it's important that those official confirmation uh, are done, but. This is a political environment that we live in. And uh, if you have read the documents. The 35 page document. Well, there are several of them. And I've read all of them. I've read the judgment, 35 pages. Yes, the, the judgment is in fact 32 pages. Okay. And I've read the US judgment as well. Okay. And I'm sure there's a French judgment. Because if you read the UK judgment, it says that. The three jurisdictions mm -hmm. are issuing a concurrent right, right mm -hmm. decision. The UK one was pretty much diplomatic, if you like, mm -hmm. in the sure. description of government official one. Mm -hmm. But individual one in the US judgment, mm -hmm. and I have a copy here, 
Uh, it's a 104-page document, but of course, I printed the section that relates to Ghana. The, abridged, the introduction. Abridged no, not abridged. Okay. The exact what pages interests you? That relates to Ghana. Okay. I printed all of it, mm. and for the benefit of your viewers, mm. it begins we, from. We don't have a lot of time. So A36. Okay. Through to A40, that mm. relates to Ghana, and of course, following Ghana is Indonesia. Categorical statements were made in there. I agree. That, that. Now, hold on, hold on. Allow him, allow him to make his point. You can, you also make your point. Categorical statements were made in there, which suggests that individual one. Mm. I'll read. This is paragraph yes. 135. Okay. It says, between 2009 and 2016, individual one, a citizen of Ghana, was a high-ranking elected government official in Ghana during the relevant ITAR time period. Mm. Beginning in or around 2009, a few months after Individual One took office, Individual One was in direct mm. and repeated contact mm. with senior Airbus executives from both the Defense and Space Division mm. and SMO International about Airbus sales campaigns. Mm. Individual One was influential in having the government of Ghana approve mm. aircraft purchases and Individual One contacted Airbus senior executive during the government approval process. In 2011, during individual one's time in office, mm. the Ghanaian parliament approved the purchase of 2C295 right. aircraft. It goes further in paragraph 136 to say that Airbus purposefully sought to engage consultant 4. And consultant 4 mm. is intermediary 5. Okay, in the, in the, in the UK, UK judgment, judgment okay. which describes him in words that are similar to a description by Mr. Mahama in his book, <laughs> My First Good Guitar <laughs> at page 260. I said similar. Okay. I know the words oh I'm my. using. But, but yesterday, so, yesterday, so, yeah, no, 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 oh, I'm coming. Johnny, please. Yeah, but yeah. Someone was I don't have a problem. Okay. So I'm saying mm. that mm. if you relate the narrative that are in the U.S. judgment vis-a-vis mm. -vis the narrative that is in the U.K. judgment mm. related to the book that was written by Mr. Mahama. Okay. You can make logical inferences. What, what becomes of your investigation individual, then? Of course. What that, becomes of the investigation That's why I said then? official. Okay. Official. But then there's a political angle to it that anybody who can read okay. and understand okay. the English language mm. can make Thank definitive you. logical Mutala, take the last conclusions. Minute. Take the last minute. Well, Bobo, take regarding who take the individual last one was. First and foremost, you see, Bobo, this Bobo, guy, are you guilty as charged? Yes, these guys are absolutely ridiculous. Why, why is that? Let's look at even what he said. He mm. said that categorically stated, which suggests you are speaking English, you are not speaking Latin. He said categorically stated, which suggests how then did that become categorically stated? Uh, Two, please, uh, please. Own admission, please, please, please. Admission oh, report. please, please. He said that they categorically stated our attendance at two school. Mm. How does categorical stated become which suggests? I mean, sometimes credit the viewing public. And two, he said that per the America's investigation, mm. that individual one was in constant communication with Eber. Mm. So what? If you are purchasing a plane from them and you are in constant communication with them, so let's know who the individual please, one is. Please, please wait. That's what we are you asking. See, you see the logic of the MPP. Mm. That childish and amateurish press conference. Is that like I say that there was an armed robber arrested at a denta mm. on the way to the police station? He bolted. Mm. That armed robber looks like Yabuabina Samoa. If you know you are not the armed robber, come out and deny. Is this not childish? And this was what they did. But, now but, but please, 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 own I'm admission that, please, in court. Nobody at no point in time in that. In the facts of the matter, did they say a dime was paid to any Ghanaian official? At no point, they said they paid nowhere. Bribes. They said they paid bribes. Every single payment that was made for which reason the serial fraud office of the United Kingdom or America went to court was that they made those payments to the agent. The agent, regardless whatever relationship he has with any individual one or individual zero, mm -hmm. that agent was not provided by the government of Ghana. Well, President the agent, speak. Hold on. The, why would is that is why I just told you? I saw an, an armed robber was arrested last week. That arm robber who bolted looks like Yabuabi and Samoa. If you know you are not the arm robber, come out and deny. Is this not childish? 
And these people want us to take Johnny, them serious. The Please, American report the says that he cannot find the PDS. You as PDS. You, as you, as you do it. should be investigated for PDS. Go you and lodge a complaint. You lodge a complaint. PDS, you have the temerity to talk about investigation. I have spoken to PDS. 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 You, you Mr. PDS. contact me to end. You, Mr. PDS. I did professional you job in 2014. You are not Your government was in power. You. You should be investigated for PDS. It says here. Even even that even Paris also is talking about corruption. For me, you need to be the one. You this have the temerity to talk okay. about investigation. Thank you. This is not going to go away. Andrew Ejapabesa is a member of parliament you for the second uh, uh, second yeah. constituency. <laughs> He's been here on the ticket of the of the NPP and also Honorable uh, Motala Mohammed is a former deputy trade minister. He's also hoping to to grab the Tamale Central seat. Well, will you will you go to court? Will you go to court? He's challenging you to go to court. The president, no, told, the president told him. The president told him.